Hi folks, uh, back to watercolour to this morning I think. Well, I get stuck on the acrylics, or always, but mainly acrylic, because I find there's so much more variety that I can try to achieve than, than the same old watercolours or recycling the watercolours, which is what I do. Uh, <clears throat> I'm still thinking of uh, of my weekend away, long weekend away last weekend at uh, Benbridge on the Isle of Wight, IOW, <clears throat> across the Solent. And there were shacks in the, in, the, in the beach, on the wilder bit of this beach. Not houses, they were just tall shacks. <clears throat> Backed up by the cliff and trees. And then looking out over the Solent. We had the uh, round the island yachts raced annual yacht race with uh, about 1200 yachts taking place very lovely thing to look at I'm not a sailor I'm, I'm not nautical at all in fact I get seasick on a mill pond but so we had a lovely time and I'm just going to knock out this sort of watercolour uh, I'm using uh, the, uh, the what's left of my pack, packs of uh, Windsor and Newton 90 pounds so I'll give, I'll give it a wet it's very porous, super paper, Ken Bromley, but we can't get any more, as you know, if you try to get it. It's it, it's such a good paper for the moment. It, it was about five, six pounds a pack of 20, it was ridiculously cheap. And we all loved it, but the, the, the alternative to it, but it was more expensive of course, is the Saunders Waterford 90 pounds, which I discovered some months ago. I had a chat with Ken Bromley's staff and I bought three packs of it and I've still got, I've still got some left. I've also got the best part of a hundred sheet pack of the uh, the um, Fabriano 130 pounds studio paper. Very good paper for some things. It's lovely to paint use, use for acrylics. And what I like about acrylics is that I can gesso one side of it and PVA prime the other to waterproof but you can add add chalk and or plaster dust you know f household filler crack filler and um, make a surface to your liking there's all these things you can do you can have it's great for abstracting work different colors there's no limit there's no limit to watercolor of course but but with the uh, acrylics you can well, not make mistakes so much as know that you can change whatever you put on at any time. It dries quickly, which is its joy. And using the agricultural veterinary vet gel, obstetric lubricant. Uh, well, there's just just no limit. It, it slows the drying down quite a bit to two or three minutes, which is good. Uh, right, let me watercolours. Are these watercolours? Hello, watercolours. I haven't seen you for over a week. Right, I'll put a bit of raw sienna in, as we do. Usual. Let's go all over it. See, the paper's drying already. It's very warm today. Well, warm for us. There's anything over 20 degrees. Right. I like a bit of bit of burst in there. Right, we'll put a bit of a bit of blue in there. Now, if you if you overwork this bit, you will get green. But we won't overwork it, we're going with a bit of cloud now, a bit of ultramarine and a bit of, bit of uh, red. Uh. Oh, it's just a bit more dark in there.
Right, well that's dramatic enough isn't it? I'm going to give that a dry now. So headphones off or fast forward. I'm putting uh, five second adverts throughout my paintings now just to get a bit more money out of YouTube to help pay for all this. Alright, headphones off. Okay, you get that lovely softness with this sort of paper, with this rough paper. What's there? Oh. I'm really pleased with that, that uh, looks good to my eyes. Right, let's uh, go and put a bit of tree stuff in. Uh, I bought this graduate brush, I bought several grad graduate brushes over the last few weeks. Um, I'm going to see what it'll, if it'll do the trees. So, a bit of Payne's grey, a bit of red, a bit of yellow. Go okay, nice. Green. Oh, that's a Light coming from one side there, so we'll put in a bit of light. Carefully paint round the building. Try and leave a little bit of a margin. Oh, it works, isn't it? It's a nylon bristle brush, but very good. I think blue would be better than the paint's grey actually. So let's change that and see what happens with red, blue, yellow, load of blue. I'll add a bit of uh, filigree to the trees. This here. We plenty of water with it. So a bit of blue in there now. As we just go into that distance. Right, we'll get some harder stuff in here. So. Well, I've never used a bristle brush and watercolour. Okay. Right, that's a hike. Uh, 
a uh, bit, of, bit of light, light green, or well, lightish green. A little bit of shadow in there, I think. That green. A uh, bit, bit of umber and a bit of Payne's grey, I think. Like a good rich dark in there. But you have to control the water in the hake doing this. A bit of water in there. It's just Right, I'll put a bit of sea colour there, so a good sea colour, with blue is the ultramarine and, and uh, raw sienna. This, the leisure, the Warner's Leisure Hotel was right on the beach, but just up a little low cliff, so you could go onto the beach. Which the tide went out loads. I'll do something with that when it's dry off a bit. It's a little bit dark, a bit more blue, a bit more colour in there. This isn't a likeness of, of, of the beach, I'm just just sort of inspired by the wonderful wonderful beach. I might put some gouache on that. Okay, well, now let's just get that horizon a bit cleaner. Might put some of those boats going around here. This is just a fantasy. So that when that dries, I can I can put detail into that. So the dry brush. I'll finish my coffee. So we'll have a uh, a light coloured slate roof there. I think with my my three quarter oops, graduate brush. They're all graduate because, well, one, they're cheap, two, they're good, and three, the range, this massive uh, uh, hardware store, so it's only everything for, to potted plants, to barbecues, to art material. We've got a very, very good uh, art department. It's got everything I need, apart from papers that I would want to use. Um, that's why, and then they've got this range of graduate brushes, which are lovely. I thought was it too, too, um, too dark. You just leave a tiny little bit of white down the edges there. All right, that'll do for that. Then we'll have to do one back here. Okay, uh, 
I would have put a bit of bushes up there, just as looks like the house is uh, going downhill. But uh, uh, I reckon I'm going to give that a try now because I want to crack on with do some filigree in these uh, trees. Although I think they're a bit wrong colour. I think I should have started with the uh, the ultramarine and burnt sienna with a bit of yellow. That's my favourite colour. Get a rigger, I'll use the Frank Clark rigger, and we'll put in some stuff. I might put some, well, I don't know. I was thinking of um, some uh, white gouache in here. But This is, it's just being lost here. Just mixing dark colours here. That's a bit better there. Just mixing a bit of burnt sienna with a bit of uh, Paints grey. The rigger, you need quite a bit of water on. I'll do this while the house dries off. Don't overdo this uh, filigree. But so a little goes a long way. But I will put in some some gouache. I've got to put some bushes over this. Alright, still damp. Tape of the branches. See what I've done now, I've just added a bit of blue to that mix just to give it a bit of distance. But not a lot of distance. Alright, let's uh, get a bit of gouache. Ooh, it's a bit overdone there. Don't like that. to do something with that now. Right, I'll let that go. I'm going to just go around with the... Uh, now a good colour for walls is a burnt umber. Very light, pale. Watching a tennis yesterday. Well, I do watch it. I, I watch Wimbledon. It's the only tennis I watch. I'm not that interested. But this American girl, Cory, Cory, Golf, Golf. Goodness me! What a 15 years old, and she's uh, amazing.
Oh, just a touch of touch in there. Right, I can, I'll doctor it up, I'm going to dry it off. Right, headphones off. They're still holding water. Right, I'll uh, give me a rig up. Look at that gouache. Oh, I've just got a little bit. Keep it away from the rest of your colours though. Oh, let's just get a bit of a... Probably need more of some fresher. So I'll just reshape that there yeah, with a the, with the gouache. Just a few ripples. A bit more. Okay, that'll do for that. I'll go back with the gouache over here now. Nothing wrong with gouache. Great turn, I used it. And I use it. But not a lot. Right, a bit of a texture now. In my head, we put in a bit of, bit of uh, dark green. So blue, sienna, green. I mean yellow. But too much water on the brush, just take some off. Otherwise it'll just disappear. It won't register. Got to put a bit of detail in the windows, yeah, just to bring it to life a bit.
just a bit of undulation there. Right, that's some, just a little bit of detail in the windows, a bit of shadow under the eaves, just the blue and the red. That's a red. I'll mix my red with a bit of yellow, I think, because it's just too red. I want a chimney pot colour. Okay, well that's about it. I'll sign it, I might put a bird or two in. Bit of Payne's grey, just a little bit of blue. Okay, I've forgotten anything, I'll put it in the mount. I've got the board at about 30 degrees, 35 degrees, it's a good, good angle. <clears throat> there we are. So I have one for you to be getting on with folks. <clears throat> I know a number of the, uh, I have to laugh, a number of the uh, acrylics I put on get more unlikes than the uh, watercolours and I think it's because you're trying to tell me that you want watercolours but I of course do what I want my channel <coughs> but I'm always open to, to answering your questions so there we are it's sort of a, a beach house in a very nice spot I suppose I could put a little bit of detail in it but I'm not going to just an old fisherman's cottage uh, that brush is quite good, isn't it? That's, that's lovely, that, that bit there. That's not quite so good. But the sea, sea car, I was going to put some, some uh, yachts in, wasn't I? So let's get a middle brush. It'd be difficult putting white in, but we could have blue. Careful with this. We can try to put a bit of a white one in. I can't sort of do uh, specimens. I mean, I'm not, as I say, I'm not a boat person. But I just want to just the white will probably just dry into the paper. But as long as it lasts long enough for the uh, demo. Uh. 
a bit of yellow there, I think. That will show. Just a few coming around the corner there. Another white one. A lot of these uh, demos I put on for sale on my Etsy channel. I mean, can you imagine 1200 boats going around the Isle of Wight? Well, it's just, it's just an impression of them. I, I mean, I'm not going to do uh, yachts with them. I mean, there are plenty of people that can do that. I can't. I do the impression. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Let's uh, just wind you up, literally. And then we just sort of camera angle a little bit. There we go. So I'm inspired by, by my recent visit, or our recent visit to Benbridge. And for those old enough to remember, Paul Da Vinci, who wrote and had a massive hit all over the world, I think it was in the early 70s or late 60s, with Sugar Baby Love. Now I'm telling you that because he was the cabaret last Sunday and did an hour and a half. He has this fantastic falsetto voice that made his name. And although he was a session, made it a session uh, singer, he his voice is on about 6,000 records over the years and adverts, but an amazing performer. But this voice, he's still got it, he's still got that. I can't do it. But Sugar Baby Love, it's on YouTube. And get the, uh, look at the early version of it, his original version. Not the way he's doing now, because he's much older now, he's my age. But my word, what a great, what a great evening that was. Anyway, thanks for looking in, folks. See you soon. Bye bye.